scripture reading comes to us from the book Testimonies of the Church, Volume 4, with the subheading Necessity for Harmony. Before we begin, may we kneel for prayer. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for all the advice that you have left us, your church. Lord, may we heed every one of them, barring none. Bless us, O Lord, who have come together. And may your Holy Spirit live within us today and onwards. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, so our scriptural focus will come from 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. And we'll read together. Says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye shall all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, church, I want you to keep your hands there because I'm going to ask you once more to read that passage as I go along. So, as I said before, We'll be reading under this the topic, necessity of harmony. Necessity, that is more than just a want, it's a need. Okay, and we know our basic needs. Well, this is one of the needs of the church of God, to be united, to be in harmony. So it's not a want, it is a need. Now, what is harmony? Harmony, togetherness, oneness, Right? And is it important? Sure, it is important for us to be in harmony with one another. Not only at church, but also in our homes. And of course, our home is the first church. So here I'm going to begin the reading now. It says, The Spirit of God will not abide where there is disunion and contention among believers in the truth. Even if these feelings are unexpressed, they take possession of the heart and drive out the peace and love that should characterize the Christian church. So even if you don't speak it, you have it in your heart. It is there. It is fostering. It is growing. What happens after a while? It drives away the peace that we should all have when we gather. They are the result of selfishness in its fullest sense. In its fullest sense, what will happen? This union, this unity in God's church. It says, this evil may take the form of inordinate self-esteem or an undue longing for approbation of others, even if the approbation is obtained undeservingly. You know, we should guard against praises. We should guard against flattery. It's very destructive, and we should really guard against it. It says, self-exaltation must be renounced by those who profess to love God and keep his commandments, or they need not expect to be blessed by the divine favor. So if we harbor these self in us, self-praise, exaltation, and better than, it creates this unity, and God will not give us his divine favor. So, you're at 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10 now, and we're going to read it once more because we want this passage to resonate. Let's go. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined in the same mind, and the same judgment. The Apostle Jude says, Of some have compassion, making a difference. Of some have compassion, making a difference. A difference there suggests that some will not get any compassion. Is that right? No. It says, This difference is not to be exercised in a spirit of favoritism. No countenance should be given to a spirit that implies, if you favor me, I will favor you, tit for tat. This is unsanctified. It's a worldly policy which displeases God. It is pain, favor, 
with admiration for the sake of gain. It is showing a partiality of certain ones, expecting to secure advantage through them. It is seeking their good, goodwill by indulgences. And that brings me back to a practice in the other church where they do good things expecting that their goodness will be, merit them a place in the kingdom of heaven. It also takes me back to Zebedee's and John, John's mother, James and John, who were there asking for favors to have her sons on either side of Jesus. This should not be our aim. It says, it is seeking their goodwill by indulgences that you may be held in greater estimation than others fully as worthy as ourselves. It is a hard thing to see one's own error, but everyone should recognize how cruel is the spirit of envy, rivalry, distrust, and fault finding. Brethren, we need to pray against these things. We may not think that we have them, but we have a little seed here and there tucked away. And eventually it will cause this unity among us. And Paul says that he beseeches us, he begs us not to foster it. He says, we are called, we are called, we call God our father. We claim to be his children of one family. And when there is disposition to lessen the respect and influence of another, to build up ourselves, we please the enemy and grieve him who prof whom we profess to follow. The tenderness and mercy that God, that Jesus has revealed in his own precious life should be an example to us of the manner in which we should treat our fellow beings and especially those who are of our faith. And so because we love God, because we want the truth to sanctify us, here is what we are ad advised to do. It says... Cultivate a disposition to esteem others better than yourselves. Be less self-sufficient. Ask for help, man. Don't want to say it's me, 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 me. Don't always like the spotlight. Less confident. Cherish patience, forbearance, and brotherly love. Be ready to help the erring and have pity and tender sympathy towards those who are weak. You need not leave your business in order to glorify the Lord, but you may from day to day in every deed and word while pursuing your usual avocations, honor him whom you serve, thereby influence for the right those with whom you are brought into contact. We are to be courteous, tender-hearted, forgiving towards one another. Let self sink in the love of Jesus that you may honor your Redeemer and do the work that he has appointed you to do. How little you know of the hard trials of poor souls who have been bound in the chains of darkness and who lack resources and moral power. Strive to understand the weakness of others. Help the needy. Crucify self and let Jesus take possession of your souls in order that you may carry out the principles of truth in your daily life. Then... You will be, as never before, a blessing to the church and to all those with, with whom you come in contact. That's our little nugget for today. And I pray and ask the Lord that we will not just read, but we'll apply it to our hearts. We'll look through and we see where it is that we can create and we can foster unity because we see the evil effects of this unity. And we see what self can do when we think of ourselves higher than others. May we bow our heads once more as we pray. Heavenly Father, you're so gracious. You're so kind. You never leave us blind. You always give us your instructions. Lord, as the words are gone forth, may it begin a change in us because every one of us Lord need to examine ourselves so that we can kill self that you O oh Lord can live and reign within us Lord we know that where there's unity the devil is weak but where there's this unity <laughs> he takes control so help us Lord to help each other up 
because we want none of us to be lost out of that number. Be with us and be with our families. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you.